David Fritsch, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Fritsch. I uh, am a worker on the ISPACY project. I work on the spent fuel. I work as a F R I T C H. Um, I do industrial safety, so OSHA stuff, not nuclear stuff, but I'm out there. Um, and uh, I may not have a job at tomorrow for what I'm about to say, but that's fine. Because uh, I made a, a promise to my daughter that if no one else talked about what happened on Friday, that I would. <clears throat> about 12.30, August 3rd, we were downloading. And uh, the canister didn't download, but the rigging came all the way down. Uh, it was gross errors on the part of two individuals. <clears throat> there were gross errors on the part of two, of two, two individuals, the operator and the rigger. Um, that are inexplicable. Um, so what we have is, is a canister that could have fallen 18 feet. <clears throat> That's a bad day. That happened. And you haven't heard about it. That's not right. My friend here is right. Public safety should be first. And I've been around nuclear for many years. It's not. Behind that gate, it's not. Here's a few things that I've observed in the three months I've been here. Squee, um, the safety conscious work environment where people are constantly uh, given um, encouragement to raise concerns. It's not repeatedly or even, th I've never even received squee training since I've been on site. That's not standard for a nuclear site. Um, operational experience is not shared. That problem had occurred before, but it wasn't shared with the crew that was working. <clears throat> We're undermanned. We don't have the, 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 the proper personnel to get things done safely, and certainly undertrained. Uh, many of the experienced supervisors, the, what we call uh, CLSs, cast load supervisors, once they understand the project and how everything works, are often sent away and we get new ones. They don't understand as well as, as even the craft, basic construction craft. A lot of them that haven't been around nuclear before <clears throat> are performing these tasks. Not technicians, not highly trained, not, not thorough briefs. Um, this is an engineering problem. What happened is um, inside of that cask, there is a guide ring at four feet down, and it's to guide that canister down correctly to be centered in the system. Well, it actually caught that. And from what I understand, it was hanging by about a quarter inch. Thank you very much for your <clears throat> So, yeah, I'm not trying to cut him off, Ray. He stopped at so, the okay. end of the time, and so I asked, thanked him for his comment. Sure, sure. I, I just have if a you few, want to very uh, briefly finish yes, yeah. the additional and I, I comments. Think, I mean, obviously the point is uh, clear. Um, as people said, Edison's not forthright about what's going on. I'm sure they'll tell you that they were going to bring this out once it was analyzed, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure they've been preparing what they would answer if it comes out. Um, and I came here tonight to see if this event would be shared with the community, and I was, I was disappointed to see that it was not. And I want to um, thank the, the community of San Clemente. It's a beautiful, wonderful community with amazing people. You've been great to me. My family's with, here with me for the month. Um, and unless Edison and Holtec commit to defining success on this project as safety, and I'm, a, I'm not talking about any of the, really the concerns that were voiced today, I'm just talking about downloading, getting the, the fuel out of the building safely. Um, and, 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 and are we going to address what would have happened to that canister if it would have fallen, even if the shell wasn't penetrated, now will, will, will they take it in a repository site? Um, but the question is, will, will Edison and Holtec commit to defining success primarily in terms of nuclear safety? And there will, be, will there be transparency, commitment to safety, and the financial commitment to make sure that it's done successfully? Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, Tom, I, I need, to, you know, with the limits of what you can discuss concerning operational issues and, and personnel issues, tell us what people need to know right now and also what the plan is to tell them more. 
Oh, sure. Uh, first of all, the gentleman who brought that up, I'm not familiar with him. I'll assure you I'll go back and make sure whoever he works for that he is protected. You know, he has a right to voice his concern, and that's important. So, and, and I, I, I credit him for bringing up an issue. Um, what occurred Friday, first of all, nothing was dropped, okay, in downloading a canister, the canister, and I'll, I'll bring a graphic next time, and what I'll do is I'll write a letter to the CEP that we can circulate publicly so you have the facts. It's an industrial safety issue. In downloading a canister, this the sealed canister has about 9 sixteenths, a half inch to 9 sixteenths clearance to go through this ring. It's not unusual that it contacts the, the centering guides, sometimes comes to rest on the ring, it's got to be recognized, lifted off, the cranes move slightly and recentered. That's what has to happen. That's what did not happen in, a, in an effective manner on Friday. The two people involved, and I won't discuss the specifics because they have rights as well, did not recognize that the canister they were lowering hung up. It took a matter of a, you know, a number of minutes. Our monitor, Edison's monitor, recognized something was not right, brought it to the attention of the contractor doing the job, they then lifted the canister out and recentered it. The industrial safety concern for a drop would be while that canister is, is sitting on that edge and let's say wedged in the, the download position, by lowering the, the slings on the crane, could a drop have occurred? Okay. It appears unlikely, but you can't rule anything out. So it's an industrial safety issue in terms of a drop. The canister itself is designed to withstand that, but that doesn't excuse it. So a serious near miss, if you will, in terms of a rigging issue, and I'll be glad to provide more detail. Again, what's important is, you know, the canister was safely set down within an hour of identifying the issue, no risk to the spent fuel or the public, no risk to the workers involved, and error on the part of the crew. So we and the contractor are looking into training, proper instructions, et cetera, and I'll be glad to detail more of that in writing to the panel that you can okay. I think it would be very helpful to, to detail that, not just the particular incident, but also what the larger process is for detecting, you know, not just this event, but other kinds of events, right. and improving worker training, and both on the nuclear side, but also on the worker safety yeah. side. And, and that's important. why I say we pause periodically to look at, look at what we've learned, improve our procedures, improve our training. This obviously is an issue that we clearly need to act on before we download the next canister, which we will. But as we've gone through the process, we make sure we look back at what has worked and what has not worked. Okay, thank okay. you very much. I, I want to ask Tom, excuse me, can I ask Tom Coughlin, who is the representative from Camp Pendleton and it is their land to comment in this area. And, and in addition, Tom, some comments were made tonight to the effect that you were not plugged in to decision making on Camp Pendleton. So I don't know to what degree you want to respond to that, but, but in past meetings, you've made a variety of comments about what the Navy is actually planning here, whether the Mesa site is open for becoming a spent fuel storage site. And so maybe you could comment very briefly about that. Um, <clears throat> you've You've got several things at work here. First, about four months ago, the assistant commandant, or the deputy commandant of the Marine Corps for installations, and the chief general counsel of the Marine Corps uh, sent two letters: uh, one to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to advocate for removal of the fuel rods as quickly, uh, the, all the fuel off site as quickly as possible. That the Marine Corps' position was. Do it safely, do it quickly, and remove the fuel permanently. Where the fuel is stored on site is the decision of the NRC, and the Marine Corps, as part of the executive branch of the government, has responsibilities to do Marine Corps things and not a whole lot of uh, technical expertise on nuclear things, certainly not nuclear power generation things. Nuclear defense things, sure, that's decontamination. That's a different thing entirely. But in terms of where the site, where that fuel goes, we rely upon the expertise of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to say what is safe, what is technically possible, what is good science, and how we can get it out of here as quickly as possible. The Marine Corps' position is get it out of here as quickly as possible. Now, the next thing I've heard several times is what about the security issue? The other letter went to Southern California Edison for a detailed review, both unclassified and classified, of the scenarios 
uh, that we uh, that you might have to deal with in terms of on-site uh, response, uh, emergency response uh, to an emergency that might occur to the deactivated, decommissioning Song's plant, including the on-site storage as is currently envisaged. Uh, I think that. Okay, thank you. Does that get it? Someone indicated that the, the uh, regulations require dry storage to uh, be able to be re, uh, retrieved, uh, and these don't have that capability. So, are you in violation of the regulations? No, so, again, this is one warrants a longer-term discussion. The original licenses or certificates retrieved retrievability. Now, at the last meeting where we talked about unloading, or the first meeting of the quarter where I talked about the shim issue and unloading a canister, I may have confused the issue. I was not aware at the time that anybody had unloaded a canister. We have found one site that has unloaded a bolded canister. It is a similar process to a welded canister, okay? And, and so it can be done, done typically in a spent fuel pool. So the NRC has changed their view of things uh, in their continued storage rule, which I'll be glad to bring in and discuss more thoroughly, the NRC does not require decommissioned plants to maintain and spend fuel pools even with dry cast storage. And I can refer you to David Lockbaum of the Union of Concerned Scientists who would tell you a spent fuel pool is not needed for an ISFACI only or decommission site. Now this warrants a broader discussion where there's chance for good dialogue and discussion on this. We're in compliance today. What Areva is doing on one of the older licenses for our older system is cleaning up some of these requirements that the NRC no longer insists upon. I think that that's where the comment came that's from. Why, Tom. So, excuse that's me. Stop lying. Please, please, stop please, lying. please, please, please. Your license item eight on your certificate of approval requires the ability what? to unload back in the pool. That license is active now. That well, is that, not I agree the with truth. that. I agree with that. And that's what Areva. You're going to go and get an exemption after you. Get the Don, fuel out of the pool. Donna, that's your plan. Let me suggest that there's a constructive well, way. Well, when we have no opportunity. Let me suggest that there's a constructive it. way to handle this, which is, why don't you send me a letter with that's the, your because concerns the about? Because people here are not going to know the truth. No, then, then we'll discuss it publicly.